Whenever I ask the question, how stupid do you have to be? The SJWs are always like, hold my organic non-GMO soy latte. Because if there's something that these SJW gatekeeping rats succeed on, it's becoming more and more pathetic. They outdo themselves all the time. Because it must hurt being handed a mirror every day and it being pointed back at your deranged, greasy faces. They reveal themselves for how truly ugly they are inside. Every night, the SJWs check under the bed for Chris Pratt. They really don't understand who they're dealing with. It's fucking Chris Pratt. Everyone loves Chris Pratt. And his secret? He's just a dude playing another dude disguised as another dude. I mean, the man plays himself in every movie. I mean, what's not to love? Bravo. That is method acting at its finest that even Marlon Brando would be proud of. Now, you could literally put a picture of Chris Pratt on a screen for two hours and it would still be better than all of the political bullshit that's come out in the last decade. Hollywood is like, Chris Pratt, you're cancelled for the 10th time, re! And Star-Lord is like, okay, I'm just gonna be totally honest with you, I forgot you were even here! Because you don't cancel Star-Lord, Star-Lord cancels you, woke fairies! Now, Chris Pratt is like a household name in the United States. Good luck cancelling him, you bozos! He is and will forever be our one and only legendary Star-Lord. There's no soy in that lad. Hey, look! Look, mom, a Hollywood star that's not bending the knee to the CCP. We must protect this man at all costs. Because let me get this straight. This guy went to California to be a homeless surfer and is more American than most of Hollywood. He's probably the only sane person left in that shit hole. Because imagine how hard it must be to stay true to your values in that town, especially being surrounded by those frauds. Now, Chris Pratt gets cancelled every three or so months by the same people that watch Ellen DeGeneres and actually laugh at her jokes. We are dealing with an elitist group of fart sniffers unlike any we've ever seen. Because we are at a stage, ladies and gentlemen, where people are creating reasons to go after someone they don't like. The public sphere should have zero authority over someone's success or failure, be that Chris Pratt or Gina Carano. Cancel culture is a bad joke. If everybody ignored Twitter, cancel culture would not exist. Now, ever since Chris Pratt had that Memorial Day thing happen. Leftists have been clamoring to get him cancelled. Imagine that. Imagine being cancelled for showing his support for America, the flag, and the troops, and that actually hurt some snowflakes feelings. I mean, wow, we are truly living in a bizarro world. Someone needs to remind these rodent resembling dingleberries that without the troops fighting for your safety, you wouldn't have the luxury of wasting your days on Twitter. Now, I'm not American, as you can clearly tell. If my accent didn't give it away, but Chris Pratt's words carry strength. It shows a leader amongst followers, a stand-up individual. It's sad that someone with pride in his country that gave him all of his opportunities is seen as the bad guy. Here's my hot take. Based upon their actions, the far, far left seems to be pretty un-American. Because let me tell you this, the more that the far left doubles down on hating their own country, the more that people would defect to the other side, but that's a separate topic altogether. But as a general rule, if you make Twitter mad, that means you're right. Because the day that Twitter falls, there will be a shout of freedom such as the world has never heard before. Now you can apply that same logic to movie critics. If critics hate something, then 99.9% .9 of the time we will all love it. That's the moral of the story. If the critics hate something, then it's most likely good. Now anytime I hear that the world Woke wanna cancel something, especially a movie or a TV show. I make it a must-see event for myself personally. Because Chris Pratt's new movie came out over the weekend on Amazon Prime and oh no, the critics panned it, no way! Because oh my god, the critics are just so in sync with the tastes of average moviegoers. If I had to sum up all of these negative Rotten Tomato reviews of this movie in a nutshell, it's basically this, we don't like Chris Pratt. None of these critics actually criticize the story story, the writing, or the acting. It's nothing but virtue signaling garbage. I mean, why are we supposed to care about the actor's background when watching a f 
fucking movie. We're watching a movie, not a documentary on who the actors are. See, that's my problem. I'm taking Rotten Tomatoes seriously. They have no credibility whatsoever. They lost any and all credibility after Captain Marvel. I don't think I've even visited the site one time since. Never trust critics after giving The Last Jedi and The Last of Us two perfect, stunning, and brave reviews. I mean, just look at Elite Battle Angel. Elite Battle Angel was so fucking good. I even read the manga far beyond how the movie goes. And I have never read manga before that, so it kind of introduced me to the whole scene. And lo and behold, it has a terrible score on that website. Fuck that site. These people have no connection to real moviegoers. It was the best alien invasion movie since Independence Day. Chris Pratt was great. It's probably one of the best movies Amazon has ever made. But keep your expectations in the Amazon movie realm and you'll love it. It's outstanding. The aliens are very menacing and extremely well done, I might add, for the budget that they were working with. You know, it's great to have a movie in 2021 that isn't ramming political charged messages down your throat. Now, we can't leave without looking at some of the biased, unprofessional reviews. I can't read it without hearing in my head. Oh my god, how dare they re put a straight white military veteran re as the lead character in an alien invasion movie? Re now, let's actually get to the review here. The guiding objective of the Tomorrow War, a movie in which every female, black or person of color character plays second fiddle to Dan Strong white guy. Oh my god, that's so stupid. Is to persuade us that his suburban veteran is absolutely right when he believes he's worthy of more than just a stable job and a loving family. A movie in which every female is second fiddle to the strong white guy. Yeah, that's because he's the fucking main character. You absolute dense dumb f Chris Pratt is the one starring in the movie. It's not like he can suddenly identify as a Korean transracial to mix it up a bit. He's the star. What did you expect? And on that bombshell, before I pop a vein in my eye, thank you for watching Manix out.